Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Ken Dodd. First of all, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, my Lord Mayor, Lady Mares, your grace, your disgrace, <laughs> Mystic Meg, <clears throat> Charlie Dimmock, is he? Oh no, it's two grow bags. First, <laughs> first of all, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say how tickled I am to be here with you tonight, here in this magnificent actor's job centre. <laughs> this... Oh, what a... show this is going to be when it starts. Oh, I, oh, I can't tell you how excited I feel. Well, I could, but I get locked up. Um, what a way to end a glorious career. I mean, you can pack it in. This is the place to do it. This, 47 years. 47 years in show business, struggling night after night, dreaming of stardom, suddenly waking up and finding yourself in a shed on the South Bank. I, to a bunch of people who are waiting for a hip operation. <laughs> they, oh. Just once in every entertainer's lifetime, he gets this golden opportunity to whip an audience. Oh, that one again. To, <laughs> to whip an audience up into a frenzy. To have them somersaulting and dancing in the aisles and turn. I don't think you're up to this, you know. <laughs> See, tonight, tonight is meant to be an artistic experience. Yes, I'm an artiste, are you? And you are my paints and canvas and brushes. And tonight, my dear friends, between us, we're going to create a masterpiece. What words spring to mind? <coughs> Do looks. Uh, well, another wonderful day. Another wonderful day. What's been a wonderful week? And it has been a wonderful week for me. Monday night, Monday evening, I suddenly found out my ginseng was working. Uh, <laughs> never mind how, I just did. <laughs> Wednesday lunchtime, I had a very successful luncheon with my accountant. He paid the bill and I managed to snatch the receipt. Yes. <laughs> and only... Thank you. And only this morning, I got this morning, and you're not going to believe this this morning, I got a £10 rebate from the Inland Revenue. <laughs> and they said there's plenty more where that came from. <laughs> If I just remember to tick the right box. <laughs> what a show. What a show we've got lined up for tonight, gentlemen. Oh, tonight we've got artists from all the four corners of the job centre. We really have. <laughs> we've got an Irish rabbi, Jaime O'Blimey. We've got <laughs> a Chinese fire eater, Bernie Tung. <laughs> a fantastic contortionist, Willie Snappet. <laughs> We've got the famous Russian knife thrower, Vladimir Kutuzedov. And <laughs> the saucy Russian striptease lady, Eva Vestov. Yes. <laughs> keep going till I find something you like. <laughs> I don't mind if you don't laugh, as long as you're interested. <laughs> if you hear one you like, sir, put your hand up. And we've got a special treat, special treat for all the boys, for all the fellas. We've got a topless, a topless lady ventriloquist. Nobody's ever seen her lips move. <laughs> I'll tell you who we did have booked, Christopher Lee. Christopher Lee. You would have been frightened, Mrs. You would have, because I know you frighten easily. <laughs> I can tell that, but this fellow you're sitting with. <laughs> this. <laughs> On a Saturday afternoon, he had a, a canteen meat pie. <laughs> raw, raw, no piccalilli. Uh, yeah, this young lady, a look of blank amazement. You do, don't even know what piccalilli is, do you, Mrs.? You don't. <laughs> you, nobody knows what real piccalilli is. Not since my granddad retired. He's retired now. Yeah, too. 80s, 87. He was the chief piccalilliist at the piccalilli factory up in Wigan, where they made the cordon bleu piccalilli. <laughs> My little ditty granddad used to get to that piccolo at works every morning, five o'clock in the morning, hail, rain or snow, he'd go inside, take all his clothes off, every stitch. You can imagine, can't you? Do? <laughs> little skinny granddad, all skinny pink and little white legs. He used to have a mine twice a week. And he'd go in there, take all his clothes, he used to climb into this huge vat, this huge tank of hot, steaming mustard piccolilli. Up to you, he used to jump up and down a bit till he found his bearings, and then... <laughs> My granddad's job used to feel round for the cauliflower. <laughs> Next time you have some piccalilli, think about my granddad. Yes. <laughs> that was his motto. Have a gherkin to keep you working. Yes. 
Christopher Lee, Dracula, he broke into Dolly Parton's dressing room and he bit her on the neck. Mm. All the police, police came, took him away, got his eyes tested. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it, that's all the joke finished. Well, <laughs> that's all. No, listen, no! Oh. You don't sympathy. That's. <laughs> That's all, that's all the jokes I can remember. There's a heck of a lot to remember in this show, you know. And, and it's, it's, it's my age, you see. I should be in a home with her. <laughs> this... <laughs> Has anybody seen my show before? Yes. Would you mind telling me what to do next, please? <laughs> no, you see, we have a system, and we have a system for testing your particular ability. Now, on the front rows, you, you've got red and yellow cards, OK? Red and yellow cards, you're like football referees. You're in charge of the audience's good taste. Now, if I tell a very saucy joke, you hold the yellow card up and I shall immediately pull himself together, OK? <laughs> uh, if I tell a very, very uh, obscene joke, well, of course, you just you miss it. You just hold the red card up and uh, uh, I'll go off and you sing the song. <laughs> but what sort of songs do you sing there? But soul music. Really, soul music. Oh, uh, Colin, have you any songs about fish? <laughs> <laughs> what about There's a Place for Us? No. <laughs> As you know, ladies, as you know, the next week is National Romance Week. One good turn gets most of the duvet. So... <laughs> you, you do understand, ladies, you do understand what I'm trying to ask you to do, don't you, girls? Because, like, after all, you are women. Um, <laughs> no, well, no, well, your brains are smaller than ours. Uh, <laughs> did I say something naughty, then? <laughs> I shall have to have my legs slapped. When would you like to do it? <laughs> Oh, come on. Now, blondes, and blondes particularly, blondes. I mean, why do blondes like BMWs? Because they can spell it. And... <laughs> <laughs> and when ladies get together, it's like a group headache. And <laughs> what do girls talk about? What do girls talk about? Men. 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 Two ladies talking. One said, that man. That man, from the moment I met him, it was moan, moan, whinge, whinge, cry, cry, swear, swear. So when did you meet him? Said I ran over him in the car. <laughs> Yellow card. Oh, yellow card. Oh, dear. I'll try again. <coughs> de de this, it's a desert island joke. Desert island joke. This fellow's been shipwrecked. We've been on a desert island for five and a half years. It's, long, it's a long time to be without. And he's standing on the desert island. He's counting his coconuts. And from out of the ocean strides this beautiful girl. And she is beautiful. She's six foot two. She's six foot two. She's got flaming red hair down to her waist. And she's a gorgeous, beautiful figure. And she's wearing one of these uh, black, uh, wet rubber suits. <laughs> Ten thousand miles away, then. <laughs> anyway, she strides out of the ocean. Can I do it again? She's got a, a beautiful hand. She's got a beautiful figure. And when it black, red, and she strides to me, she said, "Hello." <laughs> she said, "Would you like? Would you like? Would you like? Would you like a cigarette?" <laughs> would you like a little tot of whiskey? <laughs> would you like to? Oh, it's the wrong way. Would you? <laughs> it's been a long time. She <laughs> would you like to play around? Is he having got a set of golf clubs in there? <laughs> Ouch. Ah. Yellow card, red card. Oh, dear. How many? How many marks will you give me for that joke, Mrs? For delivery and style, you know? Five out of ten. Five? Oh, that's my style. <laughs> why, why, why are you stopping my benefit? Why? why... <laughs> what was wrong? How can I improve it then? Well, I'm a bit disappointed, actually. Why? I thought you were a lot taller. <laughs> Right, we'll try, we'll try again. Then this uh, last one. This is uh, a, 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 jo a young teenager gets his first job. Ah, young first job in a supermarket, and he is happy as anything, stuck in the shelves. And this very, very posh lady comes. She said, "Young man, young man," she did. Go and husk your manager. May I buy half a grapefruit? He said, "Pardon me, she's too, too big. I'm a very, very posh lady." She said, pop off. She said, "Go and ask your employer. May I purchase half a grapefruit?" He doesn't like them. <laughs> So the kid goes to the boss's office, hey boss, he says, I'm old baggy, he wants to... Oh, and then he looked, she'd followed him in. She was right behind him. <clears throat> he said, some old bag wants to buy half a grapefruit, and this beautiful lady wants to buy the other half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the boss, and this kid's good. 
this, this, you, you for me, son. You, you, you're taking on permanent. He said, where'd you come from, son? He said, I come from Wigan, where they have fat old slags and brilliant rugby players. <laughs> the lad, he said, my wife's from Wigan. He said, what position does she play? <laughs> <laughs> according to the newspapers, according to the newspapers, there's only three things in life worth talking about. That's sex, money and power. Sex, money and power. Sex, money and power. What's, what's, the, mo what's the most important thing in your life, sir? The gentleman with the dicky boy. Pardon? Sex. Sex? God, what a memory. <laughs> <laughs> She's nodding. <laughs> Say money, and people are always amazed when I tell them that I'm a little bit interested in money as well. <laughs> Dare you? I've got money I've never used yet. <laughs> it just happens my my hobby is collecting pictures of the Queen. <laughs> we need a question. We need a question. I uh, can. Oh, oh, beautiful girl. Oh, hello, oh, it's Claire Sweeney. Oh, thank you for lending us your support. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say thank you for your support when I was starting out as a teenager in the business. All yes. the help and encouragement. Thank you. That for was that. my father. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say life is a gamble, Ken, especially show business. Yes. Are you a gamble and do you take risks? Is that an offer? <laughs> <laughs> it? We were all we're all gamblers. We all take risks, don't we? We all we're all interested in money. Every Wednesday and Saturday, we're all waiting for the big finger. <laughs> it could be you. You. Last Saturday night, my heart nearly stopped. I was just five numbers off a winning line. <laughs> oh, I was close as that. I don't know what I'd do if I won the lottery. I'd probably give it all away. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I went into a shop last Saturday to buy a lottery ticket. There was a gorgeous girl behind the counter. She said, next week will be rollover week. I said, really, though? Gosh, that's better than winning ten quid. <laughs> Could be you, could be you. Fell around here, clicked on the lottery. Did you read it in the papers? It's won, won millions and millions of pounds on the lottery. Ooh, he went crazy. He went balmy. Spend, spend, spend. He had all the house stone cladded. There they <laughs> Two pounds down from B&Q. A 22 cat gold cat flap. Then... <laughs> then he thought about holidays. His wife, she, she said, I'd like to go somewhere where I've never been before. He said, try the kitchen. <laughs> then... No, lady, the most important thing in the world is... Happiness! Are you all in a good mood? Yes! Good. Then there's a quid. <laughs> oh, this, this is terrible. It gets stress, you know, stress, stress. It affects every stress. You're under stress, I'm under stress. I don't know what I'm under stress for. I'm the only one who knows what time the thing's going to finish here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to depress you. <laughs> oh, I'm an optimist. No, an optimist, love. It's nothing to do with your eyes. <laughs> That 50%, 50%, and that's almost half. 50... <laughs> well, I know I'm not brilliant at figures, but. <laughs> and neither are a lot of people. Do you know that five out of three people can't do fractions? 50% <laughs> uh... of this audience are all optimists. They're the ones who book taxis for 20 past 12. <laughs> Never worry about the time when you come to one of my shows. Won't do you any good, the doors are locked. Uh, <laughs> never worry about late buses or taxis. There's always plenty of milk floats around by the time I'm finished. <laughs> I will admit, in the past, in the past, some of my shows have been a bit substantial. I've seen children grow out of their trousers, will I be not? <laughs> all the top people under stress, all actors, act, famous actors, wake up in bed in the middle of the night and wonder whose bed it is. They... <laughs> If there's a flash of lightning, they'll say, I'll buy the negatives. <laughs> What's stress, stress in show business, stress in sports? Any Manchester United supporters in? Yes! yes. It's always women, isn't it? <laughs> they you know, he's being jealous. They've got Sir Alex Ferguson. See? Sir Alex Ferguson. The other afternoon, the Queen very graciously dubbed Sir Alex with a golden sword and gave him a gold stopwatch ten minutes fast. <laughs> then... <laughs> All the Manchester United players, they all went out on the pitch following their captain. <laughs> the other night in our house in Nottingham, the phone rang. I picked up the phone. He said, Hello, Ken. Chris Tallent here, ITV's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Ken, we have David Beckham here and his wife Victoria. And with your help, we can get them up to £100. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, let's, let's change the song. We'll have, we'll, 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 we'll have a, should we have a song, lady? We'll have a song. Should we have a song? Yeah. yeah. Because I tell you, you've, uh, you've done very well. I've you passed your audition. I'm going to keep you on. This... <laughs> no, I, I'm not disgruntled. I'm not disgruntled. At the same time, I'm not gruntled either. No. <laughs> no, I'm far from gruntled. Because... <laughs> At this part of the show, Mrs. At this part of the show, we usually have a, a fanfare. You see, six members of Her Majesty's Fazakali Fusiliers, they, <laughs> with big long thingies, they trumpets. They all, they usually go. Do, 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 do. <laughs> well, they're stuck in traffic, so it's got to be you. So, <laughs> how, how do they have to go, Colin? How do they go? Two, three. <laughs> that used to send men into battle screaming with anger. <laughs> no, not enough wind. We need more wind. We need more wind. So we'll, we'll, we'll have everybody breathe in. No, no, not all together. No, no. It's a very flimsy building. This. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to do it by rotor. Now, all this side here, all this side, when I count three, I want to all do breathe in. You know, everybody, big breaths. Yeah, you as well, dear. This, uh, <laughs> After three, everybody breathe in and, and hold it. Right, one, two, three. <laughs> now, hold it, hold it. Don't let us escape from anywhere. Now, <coughs> all this side, you're ready to inflate, ready to inflate. Right, one, two, three. <laughs> now, all in the middle, everybody breathe in. <laughs> now, after the... One, two, three. <laughs> well, you know you would have bent bugle, you know that. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm trying to create the party, a party atmosphere, you know? We'd give you all party hats for, you know, there's the expense. I was, <laughs> I was going to organise an orgy, but have you seen the price of grapes? <laughs> <laughs> we could have some funny noses. Yeah. Oh, well, that saved a few, Bob. <laughs> In the second half of the show, Lydia, in the second half, it was too hard, you don't get away lights. In the second half, <laughs> I blew the red arrows. Keep, so keep the gangways clear. This. <laughs> the red devils. Have you seen these young men? The red devils. Oh, what brave young men they are. 55,000 feet in the air. 55,000 feet high in the air. These young men, they leap out of their aeroplanes with their coloured smoke trailing from their boots. Well, they say it's coloured smoke. <laughs> <laughs> What, what sort of a song should we have? Shall, shall we have a real lovey-dovey, sloppy love song, a Mills and Boone song, or shall, I, shall we have a song full of lust and grr? I want all the intellectuals at the back. Would you, would you stop what you're doing for a moment, please, and just concentrate? <laughs> have a look around if you want. Isn't this a beautiful building? Look at the architecture. This is all early porter cabin with a hint of mock wimpy. <laughs> this... <laughs> is there a lot of love going on in the south of England, girls? Yes. <laughs> Colin, could you play There'll Never Be Another You? This... <laughs> Are men from London great lovers, ladies? No. <laughs> they should be, they should be. My uncle, my uncle wrote a book about the South Bank, well, a leaflet, and it said... <laughs> They discovered in history that the South Bank of London is actually built on the same site as the Garden of Eden. Now, how about that, ladies? That, that calls for a sharp intake of breath. <sighs> oh, when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Girls, ladies, you are, now actually, you are now sitting in the Garden of Eden, where all this passion and romance started, where Eve said to Adam, should you love me? He said, well, who else is there? <laughs> You and the snake. <laughs> and frankly, so, <laughs> so I want some love and encouragement. So say, enc encourage me. Say, say, go on, Ken. Go on, Ken. You can do it. I can do what? <laughs> so go on, Ken. Shows you willing. <laughs> You're willing. You're willing. You're willing. <laughs> They come and sit in the front row and their batteries are half down. <laughs> drums, that'll do it, drums. Oh. We've all come here to the show. We've all come here to the show. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, what a wave of enthusiasm that was. <laughs> bugles, that'll do it, bugles. 
Oh, yes, 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 yes. We won't come here to the show. We won't come here to the show. I want to see and the way we go. We'll dance and sing and we'll cheer and clap. We think Ken Dodge jokes are great. <laughs> Do you know, I'm really looking forward to this tonight. <laughs> you know, it's always tomorrow. Uh, I was coming down the motorway, coming down the M1 this afternoon. I, I was, I was tear out, I was going ever so fast, and I, I overtook this low flying Skoda. And, <laughs> Oh, this story, it, was, it was all over the motorway. It must have been one of these women drivers, you know. Like, <laughs> is there fog on the river? <laughs> oh, come on, girls, you must be kidding. Men are better drivers than the ladies, aren't we, lads? Yeah. Oh, yes, we are. <laughs> I will say this. There's, n <laughs> there's nothing like being a passenger in a car driven by a lady driver for making you religious. <laughs> And you can always tell. You can always tell when you're following a car driven by a lady driver because the nodding dog on the back shelf's going, oh. oh, oh. <laughs> and I will say, ladies have better driving manners than men. Oh, yes, because ladies, they've read the highway code, you know, nosy. And. This <coughs> <laughs> is dangerous now, driving cars. Oh, the motorways, these huge lorries, huge drive, all on the way to the continent because these lorry drivers, they love going on the continent because it gets their other arm brown. <laughs> 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 All the farmers with their Land Rovers, like a Jeep on steroids. And, <laughs> and the Volvo Brigade. A lot of people say, no, the Volvo's a bit too heavy. Mostly people who've been run over by one. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is the time of the year when all the caravans leave their nests. I've, oh, the caravans, bless them. I've, what a wonderful holiday that must be. I think any man who hasn't spent a fortnight in a caravan with seven kids, a wet spaniel, and a wife on UHT, HRT. <laughs> There's road rage. Oh, road rage. A little old lady, that's right, she must have been 87 years old, driving down around the M25, doing 120 miles an hour. It's a furry story. Well, 120, <laughs> 120 miles an hour and knitting at the same time. A policeman shouted, pull over! She no, the socks! <laughs> I had a bump in my car this week. Only a bump, you know, nobody hurt, no policeman. It's very civilised, actually. The other driver and myself just simply got out. We exchanged names. I called him a Pratt and he called me a dickhead. So, <laughs> We spent a very interesting ten minutes discussing each other's parentage, and he went off in a huff. It's one of those Yugoslavian cars. Uh, I was driving home the other night, uh, late at night after a show. Well, it was the early hours of the morning, because you know what time these things finish. And I was... <laughs> I was driving down this little twisty, turny country lane. It was dark. Oh, it was dark. There was no moon, and the wind and the rain were lashing down, and the branches of the trees looked like clutching hands. Oh, I thought I must remember to pay the V18 next week. <laughs> Suddenly, without any warning, I became a whir. Yes, I said to him, Kenny, you're becoming a whir. I was... <laughs> yeah, man knows when he's a whir. I was, I was a whir of another car following my car. Following! I was scared stuff, because you read in the newspapers, you know, about these, these alien beings, you know, these UFOs, these, these flying saucers that come down to Earth and kidnap young virile men. And <laughs> take them... <laughs> I've seen it on the X-Files, the X-Files. <laughs> these alien beings, they, they leave their mothership in Luton. And they... <laughs> They've all got big tentacles. <laughs> but then everybody in Luton and, and they <laughs> and they, 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 they get you, they get you, so have clean on. And they <laughs> they take you to the planet Venus, the planet Venus, which is you know, sir, and you know, the planet Venus is ruled by a race. It's the planet of passion and, and erot eroticism. And it's ruled by a race of big strapping voluptuous young ladies. <gasps> big girls they are. Ooh. And with flaming hair and fishnet tights and kinky boots and <laughs> big girls frighten me. They do. Big girls frighten me. I was nearly suffocated once. Um, <laughs> oh, it was touch and go. Once I touched, I didn't want to go. <laughs> These big Venusian love machines. Steady, Kenny, have a toffee. This. 
They get you, and they have their wicked, wicked, naughty baby of the weekend several times, if you can stand it. Are you still on comp plan? Well... <laughs> And then return you back to Earth on a Monday morning, just in time for work. <laughs> I, I knew this car was still following me, mind you, because yeah, I could see its lights on the top of the car. It had lights on, you see. And these lights were reflected in my driving mirror. And these lights, they spelt out a word. It said, Ekilop. <laughs> <laughs> Ekilop. I thought, I wonder who these Ekilopians are. <laughs> They're probably alien beings from Luton with big tentacles. So, <laughs> I pulled the car into the lay-by, I got out, I said, take me, take me, use my body how you will. <laughs> Don't mark my face, I do a lot of modelling. <laughs> I do, I do, I do. For door knockers. How <laughs> out of this ecky lock car clambered the biggest policeman you've ever seen. <gasps> a big hairy arm rosser, wearing one of those orange day-glow donkey jackets. Didn't suit him, wrong colouring. <laughs> <laughs> He had this big policeman's flat hat, I think, with the crossword puzzle going round. Um, <laughs> four letter word beginning with S. Um, <laughs> sand. And he. <laughs> he was in a terrible temper, he stomped over to my car. <laughs> and he stuck his head through the car window. And he, he wasn't wound down, so he didn't like that. He. <laughs> he said, Driving license? Insurance company. Which insurance company are you with? I said, Well, 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 well I used to be with Scottish Widows, but she got married again. <laughs> He said, I can smell your breath. Oh, I said, you should talk. Oh. <laughs> it's worse than our dogs, and he drinks out of the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he laughed. My case comes up next Wednesday. They... <laughs> right, well, it's time to start the show, then, gentlemen. <laughs> um, <laughs> see... okay. Time. Time. That's the thing with this show. Time is the enemy, but I shall fight it. I... <laughs> Colin, will I be singing that very, very sexy Italian song? Non dimentica means don't forget you are my darling. Don't forget to be mm, all you mean to me. Non dimentica, my lovely Michael Scott. No, I'm not going to do it if you laugh. No. 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 Not even if you say please. <laughs> not, not even if you say please, Ken. Please, Ken. Maybe. <laughs> One other question, one other question. One other question. Now, who, uh, who, 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 Oh, oh, the gentleman with his hand up. Well, don't be long, sir. <laughs> the, oh, sir. It's Dennis Norton, ladies and gentlemen. Dennis Norton, and we're so pleased... <laughs> ..to have him here this evening. He's just had an operation, the removal of a clipboard. <laughs> but, <laughs> but a question. If everybody knows you play more theatres <laughs> You travel further across the country and you entertain a more varied assortment of audiences than any other performer in the land. Oh. Now, just in confidence, yeah. what is your favourite kind of audience? Yeah. Why do you yodel when you talk? My favourite or, or, or audience is, um, is, is an audience that loves to laugh. An audience that loves to laugh, you know. Uh, a family audience. As if we're, we're mums and dads and kids. Uh, last Christmas, we were, we were in pantomime, you say. Do you like pantomime? Yeah. But the last time we were in uh, Halifax in Yorkshire. We hadn't done anything wrong, we just had to go there. <laughs> no, no, it's what they call community service. And we... <laughs> You know about pantomime, don't you? You know, you know about pantomime, you know where the, uh, the opening chorus of pantomime is always the same, you know? It doesn't matter whether it's uh, Babes in the Woods, Cinderella, or Ali Barber and the 40 VAT men. It's always the same. <laughs> the curtain goes up and the pheasants are always uh, uh, dancing. Away, and, they're going, and the opening chorus goes like this. First thing is, you know, I should just get the Nobody's ever heard the word yet. 
Then the principal boy comes on, who oh, a big strapping lass, had legs like ham shanks. She comes on, <laughs> slapping her thighs and saying, "How's it a price, love?" <laughs> then, <laughs> then we do the song sheet, and this is the one we're going to do now. This this is a song about people being different all over the world. Because when you think about it, when you switch the television set on, you realise that everybody in this amazing world is different. I mean, you're different, aren't you? Yeah, you certainly are. Hi. <laughs> I'm different, I'm not trying to say it. I realise I'm a few cushions short of a three-piece suite. Uh, <laughs> a lady told me last night I was two coupons short of a pop-up toaster. But... <laughs> statistics prove, statistics prove, statistics prove, and they're never wrong, because statistics prove that. This... <laughs> here's an amazing statistic. Did you know there's a four and a half million to one chance of anybody dying of laughter here tonight? <laughs> We've worked it out, you see, 47 years in show business, and in that time, I've only ever had four people carried out horizontal. <laughs> I've had hundreds let out gibbering. <laughs> what day is it? <laughs> Has he finished yet? <laughs> Hit me again, I can still hear him. <laughs> this is a song. <clears throat> This is a song about people being different colours all over the world, you know? and so, with the aid of the United Nations, I want you all to sing along, clap along, and hold my hand. Hello, world of yesterday, we're looking out to find a way for the children. With a happy song and a happy face, we can make this world a better place for the children. We're singing out around the world To every other boy and girl We're holding hands And reaching out to all of you Come on now, everybody sing Hold my hand, hold it tight Hold my hand if you're yellow, black or white Children of the world unite Keep the candle burning bright the studio tell you the studio rules there are certain rules to the show laid down by the powers that be and I, I, I'm obliged to tell you the rules of behavior only the producer saw you all coming in early on so he's half expecting trouble <laughs> <laughs> drunks are not allowed in the sorry, drinks are not allowed in the studio <laughs> No, no weapons are allowed on the premises, so some of you will have to be frisked by the security men. And, no, I can't guarantee it, love, He just, you know, he just picks who he wants to, do you know? He just, if you like, sure he will. Oh. <laughs> Ladies are requested to refrain from throwing underwear onto the stage while I'm performing. <laughs> Not only is it unseemly, but you're going to have somebody's eye up with one of those whalebone courses, the way you go. <laughs> Some, some community singing, Colin. Community singing. Oh, super califragilistic, expialidocious. If you say that a big degree is atrocious. Sir, sir, you were la laring. <laughs> you, were, you weren't singing properly. You were la laring. I heard you. <laughs> you a romantic song for all these gorgeous ladies here. One, uh, Colin, one of Elvis's. <laughs> When no one else can understand me When everything I do is wrong You give me hope 
and inspiration <laughs> Do give me hope to carry on <laughs> Get off the roof off in a minute <laughs> What that sound for all the old farmers? There was an old farmer, he had an old sound <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> Susanna, they're a wonderful man. Now, this old man, he had some little pigs. Pigs, pigs. Oh, come on, join in. Come on. It's a party. One, two, three, go. The wonderful father, I know it's out. Now, I lit up. Missy, you're drowning that man, Mrs. Old policeman, he's always down our street. He's such a jolly red-faced man, it really is a treat. He's too kind for a policeman. He's never known to frown. Everybody says he is the happiest man in town. Oh, <laughs> oh that's what I want you to do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for a serious moment, I want to reveal a secret. I want to take this opportunity while I'm on national television before the newspapers get hold of it and push <laughs> the dirt. I was Anne Widdicombe's toy boy. <laughs> no, that's not true, that's true, that's true. But you are a lovely audience, because not all audiences are wonderful and charming and gullible like you, you know. <laughs> We played a theatre last week. The acts before me were so bad, they were still booing while I was on. <laughs> I wouldn't mind, but it was a dog act. <laughs> sure. They can't hurt me anymore now. I've, I've been rejected all my life. Aww. My life has been one round of rejection after another. Aww. And I worked so hard. Aww. A little harder than that. <laughs> when I tell you about the kind of life I live, I know I can rely on a, a wave of sympathy coming over me. You, you'll probably all jump out of your seat and you'll all say, My, 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 Kenny lad, what a lot you've been through. <laughs> my, 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 Kenny lad, what a lot you've been through. <clears throat> Actually, one, two, three. My, 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 Kenny. No, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir, you missed a my answer. <laughs> my, 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 Kenny. <clears throat> one, two, three. The sniff is sympathy, not for what I've been through, sir, no. <laughs> <coughs> How can we begin to repay you? How can we begin to repay you? <laughs> I think my mother loved me. But mothers do like... Hands of all the mothers in the audience who've got ugly children. <laughs> <laughs> you see, there's not many, are there? <laughs> I was a bottle baby. Hmm? My mother said she liked me as a friend, but it had to stop there. <laughs> I, think, I think my dad liked me. My dad used to throw me up in the air, then go outside for a smoke. <laughs> One day, my father rushed into the house, waving a five-pound note. He said, look what I've got for you, son. He'd sold me. <laughs> and that's how I came into show business. And times were hard. We were so poor, you see, when I came to show. I can only afford tap dancing lessons for one leg. <laughs> <laughs> I was out to work half the time. Uh, I did get a long run in Treasure Island, the musical. Uh, uh, they're making musicals out of all sorts of books now. Oh, they're, they're working out, they're making a musical out of the Kama Sutra, if they can get enough singing acrobats. Uh, uh, I went to the audition, but my legs let me down. I uh, couldn't get them around the back of my neck. Uh, And when I started in show business, we only had pittance. And what little bit of money I, I got, I used to spend on wine, women and song, till my voice broke. <laughs> I used to fall in love so easily. I fell in love with the lady contortionist, but she turned the other cheek. <laughs> it's a strange courtship. I used to say to her, give us a clue. <laughs> but she was, she was, she was, she was a very clever woman, very clever. She, should, she could bend over backwards, stick her head between her legs and sign a pension book with her other hand. <laughs> The applause she used to get in the post office. <laughs> Sometimes she'd do an encore, but when she got to the counter, it was position closed. This... <laughs> I ran away with the circus. Oh, the circus people loved me. Well, I was the only one who could get the tent back in the bag. <laughs> I... 
I would just listen to the, to the human cannonball, but he went off without telling his wife. <laughs> We toured, toured all over Britain, all over the show, yeah. Derbyshire. I fell in love with the Bakewell sisters. They were a couple of tarts. <laughs> <laughs> Ready for another question there? Another question? Yeah, oh, oh. Yes, hello, Ken. He hello, Miss Fiddle. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> if they rang you up in Naughty Ash yes. and asked you to be chief controller of television, yes, yes. what would you do to make sure that all the programmes were as good as yours? Well, well, I think television is pretty wonderful, don't you, at the moment? Aren't you glad you've paid for a television licence? <laughs> Well, it should be, because it was, it was invented here, you know, South Bank. Television, yes. This fellow on the south, he got the idea for television one day when he saw his wife nagging him through the serving hatch. <laughs> and... Uh, this... <laughs> what wonderful television. Have you seen afternoon television? Oh, is it what? Well, afternoon... What they're putting on for the poor old cocks? They, the poor perishing pensioners. <laughs> old black and white films. Old! I saw one last week. James Mason was in short trousers. <laughs> and, can you imagine a gym slip? Uh, <laughs> romantic British film. At the end of the film, Finlay Curry got the girl. Uh, <laughs> and all the pensioners, all the silver tops, they sit down to watch the matinee. <clears throat> <laughs> Mature ladies all seem to be chewing something, don't they? <laughs> and you never remember having given them anything. Uh, <laughs> they can make a raspberry pip last a fortnight. <laughs> All the old cocks, they're all enjoying the film. <laughs> Suddenly, Frank Windsor comes on and said, have you thought about your funeral yet? <laughs> right. Get some money paid in for your funeral, you know? Otherwise, you won't get a decent box, they'll cart you up in a bin bag. <laughs> so we start watching the film again, and Carol Vorderman comes on. She'd have had an accident. Do you want one? <laughs> Be at the top of your road tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, we'll have you run over by a bus. <laughs> Then get in touch with us, Compo Direct. Compo Direct. We'll get you some compensation. Uh, Mrs. Janocki of London, she got an ingrowing toenail waiting in the bus queue. We got her £4.75 in compensation and a new shoe with a Cuban heel. She wanted to sling back. Let's go <laughs> so they start watching the film again, and Florida Heard comes on, whizzing up and downstairs on a stair lift. <laughs> Getting this stuff from <laughs> and commercials. They the commercials. The commercials used to be happy, didn't they? We hot the old TV. <laughs> commercials are based on fear. Fear. This 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 young woman frightened the life of this fella, saying, "You're not going to believe what they've done in your bathroom." <laughs> Middle of the night television. Yes, ghosts and ghoulies and monsters. Dracula. Ha, now there is a Dracula. Who could be entertained by somebody with big teeth and bulgy eyes? <laughs> Dracula, he's supposed to be a vampire, isn't it? Vampire, and vampires can't have mirrors in the house, so how does he part his hair down the centre? <laughs> <laughs> and science fiction film, science fiction... No, it was a good, good sci-fi film the other night. You see, on the other night, it was called uh, Star Wars. <gasps> and he was in it, the famous actor, Sir, Sir Alec Guinness. He was ooby dooby dooby. <laughs> and, and there's a lovely heroine. Uh, uh, what was, what's her name? Uh, Princess Lilo. And, <laughs> and the little fella, WD-40. <laughs> Star Trek, Star Trek. Did you, did you ever have pointed ears, sir? <laughs> I mean, have you filed them down with a rune in your cap or something? <laughs> Star Trek, the spaceship Enterprise, cruising through space. And they're, they're all, you're there, aren't you? They're saying, beam me up, Scotty. You'll be sorry you said that one of these days. And, <laughs> and the captain, Captain Kirk, Captain Kirk. People from Huddersfield and Leeds think it's cake. And, <laughs> would you like a piece of carrot, Kirk, or ginger Kirk? <laughs> Captain Kirk, Captain's Log, landed in South Bank, England. There is life here, but not as we know it. <laughs> I'm going to another question, please. A question, uh, uh, sorry, please. Uh, the gentleman in the, in the red dicky bow. Yes, uh, Ken. Oh, it's you. It's me, yes. <laughs> we live in a much more aggressive world today, and yeah. there's a lot of pushy people around. Both now, there, you yeah. are an icon of humour. Yes, yes. What would be your recipe to allay people's stresses and fears? Well, first of all, you tell me what an icon is. <laughs> <laughs> You are an icon. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm. Yeah. Yes, I think we do, Nicholas. I think, I, think, I think we live in a very, very aggressive world. Don't you think so, Fishface? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to come outside? Oh, you do? Oh, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> do you, 
<laughs> very aggressive world. I was down in that lovely, lovely genteel town of Bournemouth last week, ladies and gentlemen, and on the beach at Bournemouth, I heard this couple having a domestic row, turn my stomach. This man was shouting at his wife, and she was shouting at her husband, very coarse. And the husband started swearing at his wife, she started swearing, very, very vulgar. And they're not going to believe that the husband, the husband actually started hitting, 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 hitting his very own wife, and, and she started hitting her husband. And then the policeman arrived, and they both started hitting the policeman. Then the crocodile ate the sausage, and they threw the baby through the window. <laughs> We want to get back to a more genteel world, a more peaceful world. The world, the genteel world of Jane Austen. All the ladies wore crinolines. Well, most of them were bow-legged anyway. And <laughs> the gentlemen all wore very, very tight, very, very tight riding breeches. If they had any small change, you could tell whether it was heads or tails. <laughs> and riding boots. And they had good manners. In good, they had good manners and etiquette. They had lots of etiquette. If, <laughs> if a young man wishes to knock it up, wishes to court a young lady, <laughs> he'd have to visit her very stern father for permission. And the father would say, "Are your uh, are your intentions towards my daughter honourable or dishonourable?" Oh, well, you mean we've got a choice? <laughs> and have you known my daughter is nicely reared? She's not too bad from the front either, sir. <laughs> Can you support a family? I think so. Well, there's nine of us. Yes. <laughs> Elizabeth Bennett, Mr. Mr. Darcy. Oh, Mr. Darcy, I understand you have 2,000 a year and a couple of acres. He says, that's true, yes. <laughs> Mr. Darcy says, Miss Bennett, may I drive you home? I have a whip. <laughs> Miss Bennett said, Mr. Darcy, would you care for a stroll around the garden? I'd like to show you my floribunda. He said, I'd look forward to that. <laughs> I'm told at this time of the year, my busy Lizzie's are a sight to be seen. He said, they certainly are. <laughs> <laughs> we're, ready for, we're ready for another question. Uh, any, anyone, anyone have... Oh, a lady here. Yes. Yes, yes. Oh, it's Dora. Yes. Oh, dear Dizzy Dora. Kenneth, I'm a great <laughs> admirer uh, of your singing. I love you to sing. But why do you keep pulling funny faces? Because I want you to sing a song all the way through without pulling a funny face. Could you try and sing a nice song just for me? <laughs> For you, my love, and for all these lovely ladies in the audience, uh, one of a favourite song of mine, "The Very Thought of You." The very thought of you. <laughs> and I forget to do. The little ordinary things that everyone ought to do. <laughs> I'm living in a kind of daydream. I'm happy as a king and foolish though it may seem to me. That's everything. <laughs> the mere idea of you. <laughs> the longing here for you. You'll never know how slow the moments go. Till I'm near to you I see your face in every flower Your eyes in stars above So then for you The very thought of you
about a fortnight ago, I was just getting out, getting out of the bath. I'm fairly regular. And <laughs> we've got one of those all mirrored bathrooms, you know. I'd never seen myself upside down before. And <laughs> I'd always known that I point magnetic north. I, <laughs> Very like Charles Dickens. He had he had great expectations, but he also had a, he also had a little Doris. Anyway, I was <laughs> I'm just getting out of the bath. I thought, I thought so hang on, Kenneth. Then. Think on, Kenny. Am I getting into the bath or am I getting out of the bath? Because after at a certain age, you know, you start losing a marble a day. Uh, <clears throat> what do you do? How many times have you gone upstairs and said, "What does it come of evil?" So then I'm in a sort of a limbo. I said, "Am I getting into the bath? Or am I getting out of the bath?" So I shouted downstairs to our kid. That's my brother Billy, you know. He's two years older than me, but he's crackers, otherwise he'd be doing this. And... <laughs> you know, he's a good lad, he's a good lad. Very, very good-hearted lad. Gives most of his money to sick animals. He doesn't know the sick when he backs them. But... <laughs> I shouted down, I said, Billy? He said, what do you want? Let's give me a minute. So our kid, he no more, he put the sporting life down, and he dashed up those stairs like a mad thing. Well, no, he got part way up. He said, Kenny? I said, what? He said, am I coming up the stairs or going down the stairs? <laughs> Oh, I said, look, you better ask Mrs. Ask Mrs. Plackett. Mrs. Plackett, she's the queer one and comes in two or three times a week and does the dusting for us, you know. Well, she smashes more things than she dusts. <laughs> That's where my little China donkey went, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that little donkey. He only had three legs and one eye, but you could tell it was a donkey. Anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> so Billy shouted, he said, Mrs. Mrs. Plackett? She said, what do you want? He's come in a minute. So Mrs. Plackett does his upstairs. She said, what do you want? Our Billy said, Mrs. Plackett. Mrs. Plackett, he said, our Kenny doesn't know whether he's getting into the bath or getting out of the bath. And I don't know when I'm coming up the stairs or going down the stairs. Oh, she said, you two, she said, you make me really sick. She said, was that the front door or the back door? <laughs> <laughs> these girls, these ladies, here's that. You want to hear some classical music, don't you, girls? Yeah. Women across the nation suffer, I'm told, from night starvation. If you're the one that cannot slumber, write to me with your name and number. <laughs> one day, builder Charlie Hicks was bending down to lift some bricks. When he heard a spinster scream, that's the biggest full moon I've ever seen. <laughs> when you go for your new pension, here's the thing I'd like to mention. If approached by someone shifty, phone a friend, not 50-50. <laughs> Happy son of a gun. That's why I am banging this drum. I'll stay all night upon this stage, cos I've been put on the minimum wage. <laughs> right. <laughs> One more question. Another, another question, please. Oh, Ken, young man. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Um, could you sing me a song my mum used to sing to me when I was a Diddy man? And when I you still were a wish man. I was a Diddy man. Ken. I wish you were a Diddy man now. Sometimes. Well, you could be a Diddy man, Frank, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what height are you when you're flat on your back? Um, <laughs> it depends what I'm looking at. <laughs> <laughs> Frank would like a song to remind him of home. What part of Hammersmith is Matinata? La rora di bianco vestita Dal luscio si schidio gran sol Deja con la rosa a sua dita Correzze del fiore la stual Con moso don frime tavarno Il torno il criato a pa Eterno ti si e di vanno Mi stocchi dolente cantare I wish you joy Though teardrops burn And if someday You should want to return Please hurry back and we'll make a new start Till then you're breaking my
two-faced lot. <laughs> all the world's a stage and all the men and women are acting the goat. <laughs> Like, yeah, we're, all, we're, all, we're all pretending. I'm pretending to be a comedian. You're pretending to be an audience. <laughs> Would you mind pretending to laugh, please? <laughs> a question from someone. An actor, preferably. No, Ricky doesn't count you. <laughs> uh, Ken. Yes, uh, Keith Barron, ladies and gentlemen. Keith Barron, yes. Lovely to see you. Yes, young man. Uh, Ken, you are, of course, the greatest, I have to say that, but you've also appeared... Uh, in Alice in Wonderland and Hamlet. How is the acting career going? Well, well, actually, thank you, Keith. I, uh, you're quite right, I did uh, appear with Kenneth Albrand. And <laughs> I, uh, I have been, uh, you know, studying, still studying my drama and acting. I saw this uh, advert in a newspaper last week. It said, earn millions in a few short weeks. Why work when you can become an actor? So... <laughs> I've enrolled for a drama course in the Hambone Academy of Acting and Drama by post. And <laughs> the advert said, send no money now, but make sure the check's in the post tomorrow morning. <laughs> I've had my potential spotted. I can get it off with Terps, I think. <laughs> Every week you get a different lesson. Last week it was gestures, gestures. Look at it. How's that one? What's that one? You know what this is? This is, I must remember to put the top on the super glue tube. Uh, <laughs> And you have elocution, elocution. What the, the lesson elocution is, you, what you do is you fill your mouth up with marbles. <laughs> and when you've lost all your marbles... <laughs> for my final exam, I got this, uh, the actor's kit. This is the, the, uh, this is the kit you get. They've all got these. This is the, uh, this is the authentic costume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you look like? <clears throat> huh? One of the case sisters. You got <laughs> well, This is the one. This is it. This is where I do the thing, you see. <clears throat> Pardon? I can't help it if it's looking at you, man. <laughs> I went on as Hamlet, came up as Omelette. <laughs> <laughs> It's a miserable play. Have you seen the Hamlet? Whew. Everybody either gets murdered or poisoned or snuffs it. It's like the Christmas edition of EastEnders. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies are potty about dramatic love songs, that direct the real emotional love songs, and we need a love song for all the ladies. Now, everybody has a favourite love song. Do you have a favourite love song, dear? Has... And it all started in show business, yonks ago in history. It started here, around here, in the caves at Hampstead. And... Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, there's still a few people living in them. And... <laughs> There were three cavemen, Iggy, Oggy and Oggy, and they'd been out hunting dinosaurs in Kensington. And <laughs> Iggy came back to the cave, it was freezing cold, one January, and he just, they'd just invented fire the week before by rubbing two grannies together. Well, <laughs> Iggy backed up to the fire and he was toasting himself and suddenly he got a bit too hot. He was lifting his belly. He went, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. He said, I'm singeing. <laughs> oh, come on, please. I laughed at you when you came in. I... I remember the sparks, the sparks from the fire, it made them jump about. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? He said, I'm calling this dancing. Oh, that's good, it's singing and dancing. We'll do this every Saturday night, bring some girls. So... <laughs> The caveman used to go out, uh, and he saw a pretty girl, he would hit her over the head, you see, with his club, and they'd start uh, dancing and singing. They were the first ones to start clubbing. They... <laughs> it's all... Everybody loved... Everybody loved dancing, don't they? First of all, there's the... Uh, first of all, there's the Scottish dancing. Perspire when his new kilt caught fire. <laughs> then there's the, the Irish dancing. <laughs> they dance like this because they come out without any money. <laughs> <laughs> the English dancers, the English, the Morris dancers, all oh, the Morris dancers. These wonderful bands of young Englishmen who every Sunday come dancing gaily out of the village pubs. <laughs> Strip the willow. <laughs> 
Orange Meadow his daughter's in the club. They're... <laughs> the Morris dancers with their lovely straw bonnets. Their lovely straw bonnets bedecked with flowers and ribbons. Bishop sleeve blouses, embroidered waistcoats, <laughs> silk stockings, and snug fitting velvet trousers. They want locking up the whole. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to Scarborough Fair? No. There was the fertility dancers. The fertility dancers. All the young maidens and the young men of the village would dance gaily round the maypole, saying things like, oh, please let it be a false alarm. <laughs> <laughs> and you can still hear the old folk songs sung in the folk clubs. If you, go, if you go during happy hour, you'll hear the folk singers singing the traditional folk songs. And the women are slaving in the fields all day long. Oh, the slaving the <laughs> Babby is crying for bread. Oh, stop the babby crying. Stop it. <laughs> and the men are in prison for stealing the sheep. Here, where, there, where. <laughs> now, Lord, I wish I was dead. Now, you feel wonderful when you come out of those places. <laughs> but three hours at Ken Dublin is bad enough. This is terrible. <laughs> I'm starting the business as a light baritone, 70 6. Uh, <laughs> I used to sing the floral dance from Cornwall. Have you ever been to Cornwall? Lovely place, Cornwall. The motorways are just one track, single track. And the, <laughs> and the motorway service area is a little cottage selling clotted cream. The, <laughs> the young men in Cornwall, in a very good living, welding the tops on pasties. <laughs> once a year in Helston, they leave the front doors open, the back doors open, and people dance through and pinch what they like. <laughs> this, I used to sing the floral dance at the Masonics. Are, are you are you one of us, sir? Are you? Uh... <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm in the basins. It's a cross between the buffaloes and the masons. Uh, <laughs> when I used to sing my baritone solos, I was Professor Yaffo Chukabuti, operatic tenor and saucy knotter. <laughs> that final baritone solo, the floral dance, and. Comedy. Musical comedy has given us some beautiful love songs. The most romantic musical of all must be The Stupid Prince. <laughs> the Stupid Prince is a very romantic story of a young prince who is sent by his father, the king, to study at the University of Heidelberg. He wants him to be a Heidelberger. And he is a Heidelberger. <laughs> he lies in bed all day singing work songs. <laughs> He's trying to get a BA in boozing, a BSc and a PhD. Then he'll go back the following year for the rest of the alphabet. <laughs> At the university, he lives in a schloss. There are three houses, the schloss house, the doss house, the other place was burnt down. <laughs> the prince and his pals, <coughs> they were the first lager louts. They go around boozing and wenching, which is the same as winching, and it's not as bad for your back. <laughs> he falls in love with the innkeeper's daughter. She's so pretty. So, your highness, please be gentle. If I get into trouble, I'll do away with myself. By Jovey, so that's damn decent of you. <laughs> the drinking song from the stupid prince. <laughs> drink, drink, drink. Two eyes that are bright are stars when they're shining on me. Drink, drink, let the toast start. 
ever part. Drink, we think, drink, and every true lover salute his sweetheart. They drink. From America, from America came wonderful musicals. Carousal, Annie Have Some Fun, <laughs> and Peggy Laurie. <laughs> And Oklahoma. Yes, the trouble with Oklahoma was, you see, the cowboys are rough and toothless. It's tough and ruthless. <laughs> and cowboys can't dance. Still, everybody has a good time. <laughs> Stick them up. <laughs> Kiss me. Hold my hand. I'm a strange looking parasite. <laughs> we had two wonderful composers called Gibbelet and Sullivans. Now, Gibbelet and Sullivan Su Sullivan achieved worldwide fame with two other men, Doyle Cart and his brother Orson. Take a pair of sparkling eyes, take a pair of sparkling eyes, take a pair of sparkling eyes. And these two men, sparkling eyes, take a pair of sparkling eyes, take a pair of sparkling eyes. And when these two can put sparkling eyes, take a pair of sparkling eyes, take a pair of sparkling eyes. And these two want a pair of sparkling eyes. Oh, shut up, will ya? <laughs> Gilbert Sullivan. Gilbert Sullivan wrote beautiful love songs. For the young Victorian swains, men, <laughs> you have to sing these beautiful bad salads, bad salad ballads, <laughs> to their sweethearts. Come tell me, pretty maiden, are there any more at home like you? There are a few. <laughs> Hello, sexy. <clears throat> I've got a sister. From France, land of romance, came Charles Anzaphone. <laughs> she made me the face I can't forget. Made me my treasure or regret. Made me pleasure or the price I have to pay. Yeah. <laughs> also, that wonderful French musical, all about the race horses. Yes, Gigi. <laughs> what girl could resist? The seductive French accent. tonight for sure. The sexy Italian accent. Oh, You put behind you when you're doing the sprout. Terrible sexy Italian men. Which all the pasta these? Eh? Too much starch in it. They... <laughs> We've been some wonderful, wonderful American composers and wonderful, wonderful American singers. Frank Sinatra. I did it sideways. <laughs> I myself. I'm a middle of the road singer. And then on the M1 last week. <laughs> My favourite must be Nat King Cole. Unforgettable. <laughs> you must remember this. <laughs> Try to remember. I can't. The most romantic accent of all must be the German accent. Oh, oh. You <laughs> think when you talk to a German, you have to stand 15 feet away and wear a plastic Mac. Fluid <laughs> 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 language. 
lovely, lovely girls in Germany. Big girls, big girls. They're all called Gerda. And... <laughs> You go to a German concert hall, you can hear the classic, you can hear uh, Wagner, 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 <laughs> Beethoven. If you go to a Hofbra house, you get Brahms and Liszt. <laughs> we had a wonderful German singer in this country called Richard Tauber. And Richard Tauber, he worked in this country under the name of Count von Zeppelin. <laughs> We are the greatest, we have the greatest cars, we have the Porsche and the Volkswagen, <laughs> Volkswagen and the Audi. <laughs> we are the greatest singers in the world, Pavarotti. <laughs> German singers get the highest notes with the aid of the German tuning fork. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> once in a lifetime, my love dream comes true. Just once in a lifetime, or never. Kaput, verboten. For you, my friend, the war is over. <laughs> I saw your feet on Cite. I met you. Oh, what webs. <coughs> the moment I clocked them, I knew. Daddy. <laughs> How are you doing? No, I'm doing all right. Yeah, fine. This is a very important show, Dickie. I want you to sing a nice song, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And if you sing it very, very nicely. Yeah. You, you've seen that lovely, shiny, red bicycle in my dressing room? Yeah. Well, I'll sell it to you. <laughs> You're a Greek. I'm a what? <laughs> well, sing. <laughs> Sing a romantic song for all these lovely ladies. What would you like to sing? When they begin, they begin. <laughs> when they begin, they begin. I'm beginning to get fed up with you. I don't care. Why? I'm going. You're going? I'm jacking it in. <laughs> jacking it in? I'm jacking it in. Well, you can't. We're a team like Laurel and Hardy and Andrew, Lloyd and Webber. <laughs> why, why are you leaving? I'm going to go and big brother. <laughs> Wish it had been Survivor. I... <laughs> but if you leave me, I... I'll be in a hole. I'll be in a mess. I don't care. Remember, Dickie, ambition, the grass is always greener. The other side of the street, you know who said that? Tom Jones. <laughs> this other job, what, what other job are you going to do? A jockey. A jockey? Oh. When did you first think about becoming a jockey? When I was small. <laughs> what happened? I got a saddle on the cat. <laughs> Have you ever ridden in a race before? Yeah. Where? Haydock. Haydock? Uh -huh. What happened? Started at 10 to 1. Yeah? Finished? 20 to 6. <laughs> and of all the race courses in Britain, which is your favourite race course? Aintree. Aintree? And New Toxida. Aintree and New Toxida. Why is this? Because I can't say Kenton Car. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> who, who, who's your hero? Willie Carson. Willie Carson? Willie Carson's a genius. Yeah. Willie Carson talks to the horses, and the horses talk to Willie Carson. Yay. <laughs> and what other job you fancy? A cook. A cook, huh? You could be a little chef. <laughs> short order cook. A short order cook, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's your speciality? Beans on toast. <laughs> well, I have a little query. I've heard. How can I stop porridge sticking to the bottom of my pan? Eat toast. <laughs> I'm having some, I have some friends round tomorrow, and I'd like you to uh, cook for us. Uh, you can do the catering. We'll start with... Um, Horses doobers. Horses doobers, yes. <laughs> well, I thought we might try some caviar. That's something you get from a sturgeon. On the NHS. No. <laughs> I guess we'll have... Uh... <laughs> I guess we'll have roast duckling and orange sauce, uh, Duchess potatoes and stuffed courgettes. Guess again. <laughs> I think... I think it's time you retired. <laughs> Little man, you're crying. I know why you're blue. Blue? No, blue. <laughs> Someone stole your diddy car away. He knocked it off. Time to go to sleep now. Little man, you've had a busy day. What a busy day. <laughs> you've been playing soldiers. The battle has been won. The enemy is out of sight. Come along, the soldier, put away your drum. The war is over for tonight. Swing it, Doddy. <laughs> Time to stop your scheming. Time your day was through. Can't you hear the bugle softly play? <laughs> good, isn't he? <laughs> Time you should be dreaming. Little man, you've had a busy day. <laughs> Little man, you've had a busy day. I've never worked with such a romantic audience. So many romantic couples here in the audience. Look at this couple over here. What are, what are, look, Romeo and Julia. Look, they're holding hands in case he hits her. They, <laughs> and they have a little love secret. Can I, can I tell me a little love secret? Can I, have I got it right now? You never go to sleep angry. They've been awake now for five and a half years. <laughs> Gentleman over here was telling me, he said six months ago, his lovely lady wife had to have plastic surgery. Oh, I said, did it hurt? No, yeah, he said, just cut her credit cards up. <laughs> And all these lovely young ladies here tonight, I, I, and I, I want you to know, girls, that the older man, well, the more mature man, the older man has something very, very precious to offer the younger lady. Like a good night's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> See, when you're a casting over like me, folks, you have to keep yourself fit. Keep yourself in shape. <clears throat> yeah, well, chests are being worn lower this year. So I... So I thought I'd better go along to the hospital for a health check. You know, you're supposed to go to health check. So I, and the hospital, oh, they're so busy. You can't get a corridor to yourself. I, <laughs> the day I went to the hospital, the nurses were on roller skates. They, <clears throat> the tea lady was giving the injections. I, I wouldn't like to tell you what the woman with the mop and the bucket was doing. I, it's the worst spaghetti bolognese I've ever had. <laughs> They're making, they're making mistakes in the hospital. They're making mistakes. His pal of mine went to the hospital to have his tonsils out. The trolley was the wrong way round. And, uh, <laughs> went in as Angus, came out as Agnes. <laughs> there is an upside to it. He is, uh, he's getting a widow's pension. This, this, this is a big hospital. Big hospital. What they call a teaching hospital. A teaching hospital where they train doctors to switch taps off with their elbows. And, <laughs> I went to the hospital looking for a doctor and I saw this fellow come down the corridor, long white coat, you know, row pens. I thought, well, you must be a doctor. And he had, uh, he had one of these um, neck braces on that all doctors wear, you know, well, for siphoning petrol. And... 
I said, good morning, doctor. Oh, he said, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. He said, I wish I was a doctor. He said, I'm a student passing out for a doctor. Oh, I said, sorry. So I saw another from the white coat. I said, are you a student passing out for a doctor? No, he said, I'm a painter passing out. <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> I found the doctor. I said, come on, doc, tell me, doc, what do you think? You know, how am I? For, for, for my age. Well, he said, when did you get the telegram from the Queen? I, I said, how do I stand? He said, I don't know, it's a miracle. I, he said, if you were a house, you'd be condemned. And I was looking, he said, you must leave the car at home in the garage and start jogging. It's a hell of a job keeping up with the others on the motorway, you know. I, he said, uh, I said, who's knocking? There's nobody in. He said, look. <laughs> Did you have any difficulty breathing? I said, only underwater. He said, he said, how are your reflexes? I said, try and pinch me wallet. <laughs> so, yeah. he said, any, any other symptoms? Oh, I said, just, oh, I said, I think I've twisted myself. He said, you, impossible. <laughs> well, just, just, just then the staff nurse rushed in. You see, doctor, tell them a new doctor. Said, the X-ray machine's broken down. I said, so? So the X-ray machine broke down. So what are we going to do? Well, she said, I'm going to have to take a brown paper rubbing. <laughs> Stand still while I borrow this kid's crayons. So she... <laughs> she did the brown paper rubbing. It was rather enjoyable when she got to the blues and the greens. I, I said, what about the tangerine? She said, you do that yourself. So then... <laughs> The doctor looked at the brown paper rubbing and he told me, he said, I've got to pack up the sumo wrestling. Mm. Oh, I've got to pack up the sumo. It seems I've got nappy rash. Uh, <laughs> have you seen them on the television? Japanese sumo wrestlers. Two big hoozy 42 stone men trying to rip the pampers off each other. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying to a lady? Can I ask you a personal question? While, while there's a lull, can I... Can I uh, no, <laughs> there's a lull. Oh, it'll probably go on like this for the next three hours. Is it... Is it <laughs> Is this your first time as an audience? <laughs> yes. I'm not complaining, there's nothing wrong. I mean, you know, you're not the worst audience I've ever had. Oh, no, you're not the worst. Oh, don't flatter yourselves, no. <laughs> Twelve months ago, we did the Embalmer's Ball. <laughs> Talking to yourself. And then a fortnight ago... <laughs> we were a me- fortnight ago, we went like a rocket at the Trappist Monk's annual pie and peas supper. <laughs> Oh, they're good. Oh, the trap. Have you seen them on the telly? Trap is amongst the choir. There's about three of them in the choir. Trap is amongst. They're like all on roster and they're all going. <laughs> <laughs> they just made a wonderful new CD. Two hours of complete silence. <laughs> <laughs> Men buy them and say to the wives, Do you mind? I'm listening to this. this <laughs> <laughs> no. You see. No. Can I say, then, as a, as a friend, as a friend, and we are friends, we are friends, we? we've known each other such a long time now, and <coughs> a lot more to get through yet. <laughs> By the time you got out of here, Peter Mandelson, I paid his mortgage off. No. <laughs> aren't we lucky, aren't we lucky, ladies and gentlemen? We are, you know. You may not think so being locked in here with me, but we are. <laughs> Did any of us, did any of us in our wildest dreams think we'd be lucky enough to see the end of the DFS sale? <laughs> we... <laughs> Those of us who well, was fortunate, we all went along to see the Millennium Dome, you know, the world's biggest wok. And, <laughs> and outside the Millennium Wheel. Wow, wait, you see the size of the hamster. And all of us... <laughs> All this is to celebrate us, us British. Yeah. So I think we should have three hearty British cheers for being... No, they can't be hearty ones. Well, three very quiet British cheers, you know. Because we're not allowed to be, see. <coughs> We've got to be dignified, you know, stiff all the way, coolly. <coughs> <coughs> we have three whispered cheers and show how proud we are being British. When you think how proud we are, when you see the, the Olympic Games, you see one of our sprinters come in seventh. This is... <laughs> All the wonderful heroes have made Britain great. Sir William Pitt, who invented lying in bed. <laughs> Elizabeth Browning, who invented gravy salt. <laughs> Sir Brian Horrocks. Well, never mind what he did. But he <laughs> so, three very quiet British cheers. Very quiet. Otherwise, we'll all get taken off to a boot camp. And we are. It's like cold ditch. You'll spend the rest of the year walking on the parade ground, shaking soil out of the bottom of your trousers. <laughs> <laughs> Whispered British cheer, just how proud we are. Hip, hip, hooray. Oh, <laughs> Second British cheer, remembering all our famous inventions. Penicillin, the clockwork sausage that turns around and keeps itself in the egg. <laughs> Second British cheer, Pacho. Hip, hip, hooray. I may have to go off and get changed. <laughs> the third cheer, for 
for Britain, beautiful, beautiful, balmy Britain. Hip, hip! Hooray! Hooray! 2,000 years of British history, then. 2,000 years. It all started uh, down there when the Romans, the Romans, the Romans marched uh, through here, you know, straight through. And... Uh, <laughs> oh, that stuff, let's get on to Carlisle. The, <laughs> the, Roman, the Romans built our roads for us. They're still working on the M6. Uh, <laughs> And the Anglo-Saxons came, they told us how to swear. We couldn't swear before they came, you know. If a Roman soldier dropped a brick on his foot, he'd say, Oh, Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> <laughs> King Arthur and his knights at the oblong table. <clears throat> yes, I know, it should have been a round table, because he got a, he got a flat pack and there was something wrong with it. <laughs> yes, uh, Lady Godiva, Lady Godiva, who rode side saddle, no, not a stitch on through the streets of Coventry. Side, all the people in the side said, Hooray for our side. Then... <laughs> Lady Godiva rode through the streets of Coventry, stark, not a stitch on, as a protest against taxes. Now, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I... It's been a bit of a week. Last Monday morning, Monday morning, I woke up with misgivings. And I... <laughs> There was a beautiful suntan blonde girl lying alongside me. I said, have you been here all night? She said, shut up and finish your dream. So... <laughs> It was about 11 o'clock in the morning, and I went out there, well, the street would be heard by now, so I went outside our house. And just outside our house, there was this fellow with his head sticking out of the pavement. Oh, I said, you from the gas board? You know me, parachute didn't open. So, yeah. I was just in time to see the old gentleman across the road taking his tomcat for a run, then he fell off the roof. So I... I had a terrible week. I had to get rid of the goldfish, because he was very disobedient on the lead. And... So I went down to the Nottyash pet stores for a replacement. We've got wonderful pet stores there, and you get all sorts of pets, but you can get, there's a bargain basement, you get slightly damaged pets, you know. But you get a budgie with a twisted beak. Or <laughs> a blunt hedgehog. And <coughs> My granny, she got a parrot with a stammer. And <coughs> you can the person, who's a papa, who's a papa? <laughs> I went in the press store. I knew the old gentleman for years, the old man. He used to breed racing tortoises. And, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But he was warned off for excessive use of the whip. So I went to <laughs> see I said, I'd like to buy an unusual pet. He said, really? Yes. I said, I have the money. I'd like to purchase an unusual pet. I said, I was thinking of a wasp. <laughs> he said, well, we don't sell wasps. I said, you got one in the window. <laughs> I said, I'd like to buy an unusual bed, something small and cuddly that would curl up with me at night in front of the fire. Oh, he said, how about an earwig? I, an earwig wouldn't curl up in front of the fire. He said, it would be holding close enough. All <laughs> these... <laughs> we can do with another question there, another question. Uh, uh, Ricky Tomlinson there, John, Ricky Tomlinson. Okay. Ricky. Ricky, what a magnificent fit. And this, this beard, this lovely... That, something I've always wanted to ask a man with a beard. When you have shri when you shredded wheat, how do you know when you're finished? <laughs> this, <laughs> what was your question? Ken, you were recently made a freeman of the city of Liverpool. True. And this allowed you to drive a flock of sheep past the town hall every Tuesday. True. You must be very proud to be a freeman of such a wonderful city like ours. Oh, I'm very proud. And the, right. on the day it happened, there were... <laughs> all the civic dignitaries were there, all with their chains of office and... Oh, and they presented me this beautiful jewelled casket with a scroll, and I opened the scroll and it said, present this at any deep pan pizza parlour, <laughs> and you'll get a free portion of garlic bread. <laughs> Offer ends January the 1st. May I say, <laughs> you, the, you, you tonight, you, have been the, you are the most wonderful, charming, loving, caring audience I've ever had the honour and privilege of playing to. With. For. <laughs> at. Against. Yes. <laughs> and when I see the psychiatrist next week, I shall be telling them this, you know, because yeah, well, I still go, you know. Oh, well, it's better than talking to yourself. I've <coughs> been going years now. <coughs> First day I went there, he said, What's wrong? I said, Well, I think I'm a dog. He said, Get on the couch. I said, I'm not allowed on the couch. <laughs> so, so, over, the years, over the years, he's tested me. He's tested me. I told him all about, I told him about my auntie and put my mother's hat on. And he. <laughs> He's testing me, me head out with various chromium things, and he's come to the conclusion at the end of all these years that I'm psychoceramic. <laughs> he said, You're psychoceramic. I said, What's that? He said, You're a crackpot. <laughs> so, I still hear the bells, but you know, because there's nothing on the radio. And 
I like the pictures because I love pictures. I love films. Don't you? I love, and I think British films are the finest in the world. I think better than Hollywood because they all they do is pinch our ideas. They've got a new film coming out from Hollywood now called Trafalgar. Trafalgar, how they won the Battle of Trafalgar with an American sailor called Horatio Z. Nelson. <laughs> Horatio Z. Nelson. There he is. He's, he's on the poop, having a peep. And <laughs> he says, I can't see no goddamn ships. <laughs> what do you say, Clint? Even just the popping off scene. You know, oh, oh, God, I can't get up my heart going, oh, oh, kiss me, Hardy. And none of that tongue business. <laughs> I think it'd be better if Hollywood was in this country, don't you? Can you imagine Hollywood in Britain? Eh? Yeah, we'd make some good films. Hollywood, Hollywood in, in, in the Midlands, Hollywood in Birmingham. Huh? Come with the wind, or back with the wind. They... <laughs> Rhett Butler saying to Scarlett O'Hara, frankly, my dear. <laughs> Frankly, my dear, I don't give a toss. <laughs> Hollywood in the north of England, Lancashire, Accrington, yes. Hollywood in Accrington, Humphrey Bogart saying to Ingrid Bergman in Casablanca, of all tit pubs in all tit world. <laughs> Hollywood in Northern Ireland, E.T. E.T., phone home, E.T. E.T., your mummy says E.T. is ready, E.T. <laughs> Hollywood in Newcastle, Tom Hanks, Apollo 13. Why, I Houston, we got a problem with you. <laughs> a fabulous audience, thank you. And, and I, I, I'd have you here all night because I'm stage struck. Can you tell? Eh? <laughs> I'm stage struck. If you don't laugh at the jokes, I'll follow you home and shout them to the letterbox. <laughs> audience said gentlemen we wish you good health the time to enjoy it and lots and lots of happiness 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 the greatest gift that we possess how thank the lord that we've been blessed with more than our share of everybody <laughs> 